Welcome back, everyone, to the VR League, brought to you by Intel Live from the ESL Cologne Studios in Germany. I'm Jason Kappen, still joined by the handsome, the lovely, hair-looking on point today, Blue. And we have our second match of the day coming up in just a few seconds. We're going to have five in total today. This is Echo Arena this time. We're not going to be doing Onward until later on next week. And Blue, we do have Ducks Quack up against Leftovers. Yes. Let's jump right into it here, taking a look at uh, the rosters. This is looking like a lot of players actually we don't see. We, I, I personally, at least, haven't seen too much uh, played out in the professional scene just yet. But they've already got their first point on the board. The leftovers scoring first. Jorgen being the one to actually score the goal. Gets himself up two to nothing early on in the match. It's been a very fast score, but we should go over the rosters for you guys at home. Uh, if you guys are unfamiliar with the teams for Ducks Quack, we've got Nada, we got Joanne, and we got Smoma Ding Dong. Blue, why don't you take away for leftovers for us? We've got a uh, Roscoe. Roscoe, I think I've actually seen before. Just trying to remember from what team. Uh, Jorgen SF and uh, a player who I'm just going to refer to as Gob. Uh, so I, what I'm reading here is Gobshite McGobshite. Um, you like can Bodie read it that way. It's like Bodie McBoatface. I'm except, only uh, able to. Uh, <laughs> I'm only able to read three letters of that of that uh, name. So. Oh, okay, so by the way, the, sorry, we actually had the team names wrong, so they are flipped around correctly. So for leftovers, it is Smelma Ding Dong, Joanne Anata. For Ducks Quack, it is Roscoe, Jorgen, and Gobshite McGobshite. In the meantime, Ducks Quack have the 2 0 lead. Looking for a clear her, a clear here, cur, clear her on the defending side. Back to 1990s or 2000 rap. <laughs> It's getting hot, hot in her. Well, Jorgen is going to go for a bit of a Hail Mary. Oh, and it's just caught as well. I smell my ding dong. Who else <laughs> but him as he picks it up, goes into the hands of Gob now. Is there <laughs> so they're going to try to move in. Can't say that full name. So we're going to try to move in now, get another goal, but it is a bit of chaos. It is sent into the open. Retrieved by Ducks Quack. Gob himself being the one to pick it back up. Another pass over to Jorgen as they are going to try to send it in. Roscoe will try to go for a goal here, and he will succeed in doing so. Ducks Quack pick up the second point now. Four to nothing over the leftovers. Is there a problem? <laughs> All right, so four is zero for Ducks Quack. <laughs> We're getting back into the match here in just a moment. As soon as the players are out of their tubes, it's going to be the leftovers starting out with possession at the beginning of this volley. And as they move into the open here, let's take a look and see. Pretty aggressive launch coming in from Ducks Quack. <laughs> I apologize, my co-caster is having... Bit of a breakdown on the side. <laughs> but I'll keep continuing on with the action in the meantime. Gob is going to continue to move up, inching closer to the leftovers goal position right now, but it is sent loose into the open. Nada is going to try to pick it back up, but it won't work out too well, so it'll float to the other side where Roscoe has got possession for now. And it's going to be passed over to Gob, who will actually sink it in. Well done by Ducks. Getting a third goal onto the board now. Great combos overall. Great passing routine. Very much just kind of constantly overwhelming the leftovers here and doing some great work as they uh, really don't leave much of a chance for them to stop these goals at all. Really some excellent teamwork coming out from Ducks Quack as they're looking to quickly try to take control of this match. Yeah, Smoma is not able to put up a good defense here. He didn't even have a uh, an attacker punch him in the face, um, but just not able to go up against Ducks Quack and their ball handling movement. In the meantime, Ducks Quack again, back on the attack. Well, technically on the defense, but with the way they're playing, they want to attack. You can see Gob able to push forward extremely far. Pass comes into Nada. Nada looking for the shot from downtown. He's going to be able to hit that one. And that will finally be leftovers here now on the board. Kind of running away with it. Getting away with uh, a lucky three-pointer there. They catch Ducks Quack without anyone in position to stop it, really. So well done in that respect. More so, good job by Leftovers. Other offenders keeping Ducks Quack out of that defensive position to allow for such an easy goal to happen. And with that, now they're only one away from being able to quickly bring themselves back into the match. Now they score another three-pointer, and they've immediately got things tied back up. We're just, uh, we're just before the halfway point in the match as well, so still plenty of time for the Leftovers to get back into the game Still was a very competitive game here between the two teams. I think we're just going to have to abbreviate all the players' names in this one, or else I will keep crying on air, and it will be pretty much a solo cast for you, Blue. Because <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> Gob, in the meantime, trying to actually pick up the disc here, and so it's going to go over to Jorgen. A little bit of miscommunication, I think, coming in, but he tries to go for the shot from, down, from downtown, from right in their face, and Smoma, again, 
can't put up that defense here. And every time Ducks Quack have gone for a shot, I feel like they've made it. Jorgen had to go through the gauntlet to score that goal. There he had two, three players on. I was amazed he doesn't get stunned in the process. Either that or he did get stunned. And the way the disc was loosened from his possession just ends up working out to score another goal. But regardless, it's Ducks Quack immediately negating the uh, three-pointer that Leftovers had just picked up there and going back into a very advantageous five-point lead over the Leftovers. Decent amount of time left, however, with this being a high-scoring game. Both teams could still find plenty of opportunities to either increase their lead or come back in the case of the Leftovers, and we're going to see that. They actually do miss their initial grab, and, well, the disc thankfully does get cleared away, but it was a bit dangerous that the player that does go back to pick up the actual disc is... <laughs> that does go back to pick up the disc is unfortunately uh, going to be able to is, is unfortunately going to get sent out there time. It works out, however, for Ducks as they eventually do round it back, picking up possession once more, scoring a goal for themselves. <laughs> and so now they'll be in double digits at 10-3. to three. First time we've seen that today, actually. Yeah. So Ducks Quack, I mean, they're they doing some serious work here. And they were the team that was in the, uh, the loser bracket earlier on. Like, they were the team that was already down here. And Leftovers is the one that came down um, in the winner bracket semifinals. So Ducks Quack really starting to shine. Really doing exceptionally well. And the defense from Leftovers just doesn't seem to be able to step up to the attacking squad of Ducks Quack. The launch is out. And now we have actually a bit of a loose disc here. Leftovers missing one of their passes or... Something of that nature puts it into the hands of Ducks. They'll send it back over to their goalie, Roscoe, who's going to send it right back down the field over here to Gob. Gob will send it up to one of his teammates, but Jorgen's unavailable, so Roscoe's going to be the one to pick it up. But unfortunately for him, Joanne's causing some problems there. We'll stun him out, but not for the pass as Jorgen goes off successfully. They'll move in. Another opportunity presents itself, and they shall take it. Another two-pointer for Ducks Quack, now leading 12-3, to three, not leaving much of, room, much of a room at all for the leftovers to come back into this round, sadly, with only a minute and a half left. You know, Blue, I, I feel like <clears throat> in life, you, you really appreciate some things like for inventions, um, you know, like air conditioning, not here in Germany, obviously, but in general, air conditioning is really nice when it's really hot days, especially like we've been having. Um, or in my case, the man who invented the cough button on these headsets. <laughs> He's definitely my hero for today. Leftovers, three to 12. And wow, that was a Jorgen gets launched straight into the uh, the quarterback and hits a shot from downtown. That was an eight second goal here. And if you're leftovers, you can't have something like that happen. So there you go. Ducks cracking with another one. It's looking quite easy for them at this point here, as unfortunately it seems like leftovers have lost the lost the uh, lost the plot a bit. So we're gonna have to see if they can rally back at all going into the second round. Or if we'll start to see ducks fall apart a bit. But they're looking solid right now. They're maintaining great control. Over the matchup here and with a now 12 point lead over the leftovers, I think it is nearly safe to say that the comeback from the leftovers is impossible. And we will be seeing Ducks Quack take the opening round. Oh, and again, miss pass comes through, goes right into the hands of leftovers. Ideally should be able to, as they're able to secure it another time. The problem is they're not really able to get much momentum off. It's finally able to push off the wall, gets punched in the face, the disc out of his hands yet again. Now it's going to be Gob pushing through. He's actually going to be launched in from behind and will be punched out. But the time is taken away. You have a minute left to your leftovers. You need to get some goals in. You're down by 12 points. The bank shot coming in, but not is going to be there. And they're just able to just drag out so much time. This guy just getting punched in the face right there. Oh, don't even. Oh, just a little bit off the marker. Leftovers will pick it up after that unsuccessful goal attempt by Ducks Quack. But again, Ducks Quack doesn't even need to score anymore, as it should be very evident by the scoreboard. Uh, really just need to run the clock down at this point, and that is what I believe they are attempting to do. Their loose disc sends it back over to the leftover side of the arena with under 30 seconds remaining. Now, Ducks Quack might actually get another goal off of this one, and in fact, they do. Why not? Let's just add two more points to the ticker. Up to 17 now for Ducks Quack, as they are just dominating leftovers right now. Yeah, it is it is really unfortunate for them. They're just not really able to step up at all. And I think it's just the attacking squad out of Ducks Quack. They're able to really penetrate this defense. And Smelma just can't... The thing is, you can't do it alone, right? You need teammates. And unfortunately, Ding Dong just doesn't seem to have them at the moment. So oh, here we go. 20 seconds left. I mean, this is pretty much over. Like, this is 100% over blue. Like, I, you know, it's not even being disrespectful to leftovers, but there's no way they can physically come back in this game anymore with 15 seconds left. So for them, they need to look towards the next map since this is a best of three. And I think if we're to, like, talk about this, I know we're not analysts for this game at all, but their passing game has been really... 
unfortunate. You know, they, they haven't been able to like hit the pass at the right places. They've been missing a lot of uh, potential opportunities. And uh, at the same rate, it's also really well done by Ducks Quack because I'd say the disc has been on leftover side of the arena more, more so than not. Yeah, I, I mean, overall, it's, I think it's just a matter of, in this case, Ducks Quack having been together. I'm going to assume in this case, he's having been together for a lot longer. So they've got that team dynamic going. Uh, they're able to do things like the quick slingshot launches across the other side and in general, just bring a lot more speed to the table than their opponents were able to. Uh, and that, that's allowed for them to have pretty much the ultimate advantage over them. Uh, as unfortunately, their opponents just quite literally can't keep up. And, you know, speaking of that last season, if I'm not mistaken, the joust happened after every goal. It wasn't like you get possession if I score or I get possession if you score. Um, and that, be, that created more like imbalanced games, so, so to say, because the team that was better at jousting was a team who would always get the disc in control and then would most likely have a chance to score. But the thing is, I kind of like that style because if you can't master movement in this game, I don't think you should be able to beat a team that has because movement is so important. It's yeah. so impactful. It's just like being able to pass correctly, like from me to you or you to me. Um, there's just certain things you have to learn. And if you're not able to play on that kind of level, um, as your opponents, then I feel like you should lose these matches. So, you know, leftovers, I think they're looking at this as movement definitely needs to be improved. Um, passing definitely needs to be improved. I don't know if they plan to stay together after this, um, but it's nice to see the team that has the superior um, skills in these certain locations, in these certain fields, is, start, is paying off. I mean, we saw this at the... Um at the uh, the line event that we had a couple of weeks ago, actually, uh, where I think movement became like the most important factor in determining if a team was going to be able to win or not. It was that and positioning became like the two most important thing. Ducks again, by the way, with a good start here, nearly scoring a three pointer off the backboard, uh, but it's going to be a little bit off kilter. So punch exchange between the two teams gives possession back to Ducks, at least for now, but it's not going to maintain. Joanna has now picked it up, goes for a clear through mid. It's a bit bouncy though, goes off of those islands. Thankfully, leftovers will still be in a good enough position to be able to retrieve it. A slow pass down. Again, the passing, like I understand he's under pressure and those passes can be hard to hit, but if you look at Eclipse, if you look at Blast, if you look at Gravity, if you look at the tip top teams in the world right now, they would they would have hit those passes and you really have to oh, no. do that. That's, that's a slam dunk for Jorgen. I think his name's actually Jorgen, not Jorgen. I think he's Swedish, I'm gonna guess. Sorry, is that like a, is it differently pronounced in Sweden? Or? Yeah, J's, J's or Y sounds. So I would be Jason, not Jason. There is like Jorgen though, that's like a thing, isn't no, it? No, that's, I get almost, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look up where he's from. You gotta check his flag. I'm gonna oh. check his, fla check I'm his gonna, flag. I'm gonna check him out. I'm gonna get in his DMs and ask him <laughs> while he's playing. Where are you from, bro? I mean, I can just check it. Okay, that'd be quicker because I have to hit Yeah, buttons. I already have the page with <laughs> um, No, yeah, that's, that's, you know, you've been here actually for two months now. And you're out of your three month stint casting the VR games with me. Yeah. I'm gonna miss you when you leave, bro. He's from Norway, actually. Good guess. Okay, so, yeah, Scandinavian, Scandinavian yeah. country. So that's definitely Jorgen. I, I, I think, uh, where, where's, where's Gob from? <laughs> so I, think, I think we need to get the correct pronunciation. I think he's from, from, I think he's from the UK. Oh, he's from Finland, I'm hearing. No. That's not, what his, that's not what his ESL page says. It's British. Yeah. Thank you, um, producer Timo, for <laughs> giving me correct, incorrect information. I mean, he could have just like not added that info to his ESL page and the UK is just the default option. No. No, I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. Either way, while we're talking about this stuff, <laughs> Dustquack did score yet again, five to zero. Um, leftovers here with the initial start to the round. Or start to the play. I'm going to get a good pass. That's what we need to see. Nada does get the grab on it. And he's actually going to go for a shot from down below. And there you go. Finally, leftovers get some points on the board. Again, that's what we're emphasizing. You need to be able to hit these passes, especially in these high-pressure situations. And that was perfect. We need to see more of that out of leftovers now. And Roscoe, unfortunately, a no-show in the goalie position right there. It seemed like he was you know, ready to stop that at a moment's notice. But I guess it was too low. Couldn't reach down low enough to be able to grab the disc quickly. So that will be scored. Then we'll go in for the leftovers. as They're obviously going to get on the board much more quickly than we saw in the previous round where they didn't actually score. I think until there was less than a minute left in the clock. And at that point, Ducks were already well over 10, up to like 15. So Yeah. Tall people problems, by the way. We can reach things in high places, but reaching things down low is very difficult. Mm. Well, original possession goes to Ducks. A quick pass over to Jorgen as he'll pick it up. Set down to Roscoe. Probably will go back to another teammate in a moment here. Nada's trying to get in the way, but once more, the lack of any slingshot capabilities exactly. here from leftovers is stopping them from catching up. So we will see Ducks just walk it right in again, up to seven now for them. Yeah, that's not even Smoba Ding Dong's fault there, is you need to see Nada and Joanne uh, regroup. You should have saw, I think it was, I think it was Joanna who was ahead of Nada, just stop for a second so he can throw Nada in to help defend. Because it was a three-on-one situation. And, you know, being able to, to stop that by yourself, that's, 
that's a task only a very select few in that green are able to do. For instance, Offenteric comes to mind in my head um, in his goalie position. So yeah, they, they need a little bit more help. And I think that's what we've been seeing is that Smilma's not getting the help he needs in the goal in these situations. I think they're getting a little bit too careless and a little bit too aggressive at times for leftovers. Well, the launch has now come out. Will be picked up, however, after leftovers try to unleash it by Roscoe. Who's so now like right now, Nada needs to go back, help out Joanne, mm -hmm. throw him in. He's not then... doing that, though. Mm -hmm. He's going to launch himself forward. Thankfully, Ducks Quack are playing it slow enough, but it won't matter as the passing routines between the two main players that are playing frontline here for Ducks are just too good and are too quick to establish these setups. So it's another quick goal scored by Ducks. Up to nine now for them over just two from the leftovers. Are they, uh, see what they're doing right now? Like they're all in each other's faces. I'm imagining like in, in football or soccer, you know, like a big pileup or like in baseball when both benches just charge the field against each other. Like what? What are you going to do about it? What? What? But I, I bet it's very polite. It's like nice shot. Good old chap. It could get really intense though, because it's like you can't get away from those people. If he wants to, after you score, you could just grab onto someone's head and like literally just hold your your own head right next to theirs and yell at them. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's what they would do. Not, kick, yeah. That's not what I was thinking you were yeah. gonna say. It's like no, kiss. no, <laughs> just no, grab no. two other people's heads no. and be like, now kiss. <laughs> In the meantime, the disc a big skirmish breaking off towards the bottom part of the arena gets cleared up towards the high, but bounces off the island back directly to them. It should be in the way of Duck's quack though, but a nice little punch comes through. Gob comes in, gets the quick throw away. And now a big dog pile breaking off as somehow Gob is actually leading the charge against three. Where was the punches? Where was the, the the stopping power onto him? I don't know how you can't do that if you're three people of leftovers. But they're trying to get the slingshot in. Not was, able to do it. You can see already. I mean, they had the they had the time lead on that to make that happen, but they just missed. I think. And there's the slingshot capability again. Ducks quacking theirs together just way more quickly than the leftovers did, so they easily win the race back to the disc in their own defensive position. Oh, and a long shot coming out from Roscoe secures a quick three pointer for Ducks up to 12 now. So two minutes left as well here. Yep. We're we're quickly approaching a sort of Armageddon point, unfortunately, where there's not going to be much room left over. No Bruce Willis to save you today, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> you know what's funny is that there's a lot of movies that came out in pairs that were like the same idea, but weren't. So like Armageddon and Deep Blue Sea or Deep Blue Impact, was it? Yeah, Deep or Deep Impact. Yeah, Deep Impact. Yeah, it's about asteroids it destroying Earth. It happened recently too. Uh, there was the two movies about like the White House getting like attacked. Oh, was there? Yeah, yeah. there yeah. was one with um. There's one with Gerard Butler. There's one with Gerard Butler, and I f I f forget what the second one. Yeah, one was called White House Down, and I forget the, the second one was called The Eagle Has Fallen or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of those, actually. Even, like, Lord of the Rings and uh, another series. Actually, no, no, no. Hunger Games and The Maze Runner. Those, at least, are, like, different oh, no, plots. No, no, no. Hunger Games and the other one. Oh, what was the name? Oh, I can't remember. It was, like, exactly like Hunger Games. Yeah, I mean, the there was, like, three movies. You talking about the original one? No, there's like three movies that was like really similar to Hunger Games. Because there was the Korean one that no. was like really violent and it's kind of scary. But no, I'll look it up. Oh, no, no, that's just called <laughs> that's Battle Royale. Battle Royale. Yeah, yeah, that's Battle Royale. Uh, I'll look it up in the break. Because in the meantime, Ducks Quack with a minute 20 seconds left are just trying to drag a lot more time out. You see the passing coming through. Even if they bounce incorrectly, they miss the pass. They're still seeming to always be one there. And Gob just trying to drag them in. That's what we see at a lemming so often. He's like, guys, you have to come to me. We are up by 10 points. <laughs> we can drag this out as long as we possibly can. You're the ones that have to get aggressive and have to make mistakes. Yeah from Ducks is like, hey guys, let's uh, let's try to take more than 20 seconds per goal here. We need to run the clock down a little bit. I mean, it's bit. smart. Like, you don't, yeah, that, that's the down part, or the downside to being behind this far with this little time left is you have to be aggressive. And every goal we see against leftovers, you can't harsh on them too much because they have to play that much more aggressive. They have to play that much further away from the goal and they have to make some sort of opportunity open up for them. And now with 14 to two, it, it doesn't seem like it's going to be possible. So unfortunately, time is running out for the leftovers and there won't be much left of them soon. With less than a minute left and still 12 points between them and actually tying the game. The movie, okay, so like basically you grow up in this society and you have to choose between these different factions and you can cross faction, but typically you don't do that. Oh, I know what you're about talking this about. Girl. Uh, <laughs> Divergent. Divergent, yeah, and that series is exactly like Hunger Games, kind of. Um, that one was really similar. Yeah. 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 It happens all the time in movies. I don't know how that happens so often, though. It's like they hear about a script and they're like, all right, guys, we'll do something similar to it. The White House ones were funny because I'm pretty sure the villains were the same in both of them as well as another goal is scored there by Duck's Quack. But I think both of those movies had like, like North Korea was like the villain in both of those or something like North that. North Korea? Yeah. There was like, well, like a North Korean operative or something like that. Oh, it was like the main antagonist or something like that. <laughs> It was funny, just like how similar they were, but somehow they weren't the same movie. Like, it's like, um, yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, 
was like Overwatch and like the Overwatch clone in China. It's like exactly the same game, but it, because it's in China, you can't really sue for it. Yeah. Like for copyright stuff. 17 to two, 30 seconds left. Again, this game is done and dusted. No way that Leftovers can come back. If they somehow did it, I would eat my own pants. But it's just not, it's just <laughs> Calm not down possible. Now. <laughs> People have a bad track record making bets like that. I think that one's pretty safe, though, to be fair. I will eat my own hand. See, they just scored. <laughs> I will eat my own hand. Uh-oh. <laughs> but they have to come back 13 points in 20 seconds. You never Unless know, you're dude. intentionally throwing for Ducks Quack, there should be no way. Someone could turn on the teleport hack so we could get real crazy here. To do what? Someone could turn on like the teleport hack so we could get real crazy here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's going to be possible. And Ducks Quack, they have to look forward to their next match now because they are now going to be one win away from getting through into the regional qualifiers. Remember, we still have three more games to come up today. After this match, we'll be heading up to the winner bracket finals. And then after that, we'll be heading to the loser bracket finals and then culminating today with those two teams who will be qualified through um, to play for seeding, most importantly, with the winner bracket team having a one map advantage. Actually, Kairos up against Smash Dash will be our upper bracket final after this match. I think they've given up now, folks, as they're doing something over there. We can't actually see it, unfortunately, because it's on the other side of the arena. But Club. I think they're just punching each other, basically, at this point. So it's a safe bet to say now, Ducks Quack have taken control of the series. 2-0 victory for them. They're moving forward. What scares me is that Ducks Quack was already in the loser bracket. Now, I mean, they've already been in the loser bracket. Um, and their opponents there, they came from the winner bracket in the semifinals. Like, there was a major skill discrepancy between those two teams. So who was the team that knocked Ducks Quack down into the loser bracket? Because that's the team you probably have to look forward to or look towards as being probably one of the favorites. I want to guess it's Kairos. That was, yeah, Kairos knocked I'm him guessing. out, yeah. All right, so yeah, there you go. So Kairos versus Ducks Quack. Like, that should potentially be a good game. Was it 2-0 or was it 2-1? Kairos beat Ducks Quack 2-0. Okay, that so that's interesting. And that kind of gives you an idea of, like, with A beats B and B beats C, yeah. can, you know, A beat C kind of thing. That's There we go, the transitive property. Got nice. It. I learned something eventually. Let's take a look at the bracket one more time before we head to a break here so you can see the match coming up after this. It's going to be Kairos up against Smash Dash, both of them with 2-0 victories. And down in the loser bracket, I believe we're going to have... a. Uh, momentarily, as we know, who wins between Telepathy and Bowtie Boys, who will be the match coming up after that. Blue, we're just getting started with today, but you know it's good to do some like arena action yet again, and I can't wait to see what our winner bracket final has in store. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a blast, and we're going to be having it in just a few minutes. Well, no, we won't have Blast, because Blast is... Is Blast even a team without Affin Terror? They are. They just weren't as good, unfortunately, as yeah. we saw on Sunday. So That's true. We're gonna, All right, ladies and gentlemen, back. we're going to head to that short break while we do look up some more movies that are really similar to each other. But when we come back, we'll be kicking off our winner bracket final, and we'll see you guys in just a moment's time.